So I think the best place to begin, Dr. Matthew Barton, is by talking about if I were to pluck every cell off your body <laughs> one by one. Oh, off it. Off it. What, all the bacteria? Or just every, or just, <laughs> I, was, I was just to pluck you apart one by one, one cell at a time, and pile you up. There would be about 30 trillion cells that make up you, Matthew. Mm. Now, if What I, a pile it would look like. Similar, just, I reckon it's similar to what it looks like now, to be honest. Just a pile of slime. Big red slimy pile. If I were to then take those cells and then sort them according to just their function broadly, I would have four piles. Okay, so these- And I'm not talking about hemorrhoids here. I'm talking about <laughs> four separate piles of cells uh, sorted by function. And these are what we call tissues. Okay. Right? And so, so basically you've got the cluster of cells, tried to understand what they actually do in a similar way, and then we can categorize them in four broad categories. Yeah, okay. exactly what I said, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so they're muscle, muscle okay. tissue. So that's four movement. So that's a huge part of the pile. Yep, keep yeah, going. Yeah, be, well, for me, <laughs> maybe, uh, another really big part of the pile for you is uh, epithelium. Oh, okay. Yep, so just a bunch of skin. skin. Yeah, so that's two. Skin and, barrier. skin and pipes. Excuse me? Skin and pipes. Okay. Well, let's not yeah, like the let's not get into mouth to. All right, we've covered that one. Okay, but also the the lungs. Yep. So epithelia is just barriers. Then we've got uh, nervous. So that is uh, for communication. And then finally, the last tissue type is that for connective tissue. All the cells that sort of hold you together. Right. Right. So that's going to be the focus of today's mm. connective tissue. Now, when we think about connective tissue. They actually have, well, there's no definitive way to talk about their functions, but I like to say there's five functions. So this is your five categories that you've made yourself? My five categories. I think that every, if not most, (laughs) textbooks will concur. They might only say few of them. I think I actually am am more more more? extensive. Yeah, Yeah, I'm far better than most of the textbooks. Everyone says, why don't you write a textbook? And my answer is... Because I like time? living a life, yeah. yeah. No, why would I waste my time? People think that textbooks are a lucrative deal. They ain't. How would you know? You haven't, haven't come uh, on. We've written chapters of textbooks. Okay. It's not a financially smart idea to do. <laughs> uh, anyway, so five functions of connective tissue. Okay. All right. One, here, we, here we go. Okay. In any particular order? Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> throw it at you and maybe you can think of some ways in which connective tissue does this function. Oh, okay. All right. Protects. All right. Um, you mean give an example of how connective uh, tissue protects. protects? Okay. So um, bone. All right. Like um, the thorax. You've got ribs, sternum that protects your vital organs in there, like your lungs and your heart. Very good. Or the skull. The skull is this helmet of bone <laughs> protecting protects Matt's walnut-sized brain. <laughs> so okay, that's that's, right. a, that's a okay. Great bone. So bone is. Connective tissue, and that's one way that's that it can protect. Brilliant. All right, second function, uh, and obviously this isn't – what we're going through isn't an exhaustive list, so that's not the only way connective tissue protects, right? Okay. There's many ways, it's but a- these are examples. All right, next is connective tissue supports. So how does it support? Um, <laughs> oh, support, support, support. You mean like mechanically support? It's a wild card, how, up to you, how man. How I want to go with yeah. it. Um, supports, supports. Maybe it just kind of puts together the other three tissues that you spoke of. So you have epithelium. Let's say the skin is an example. You have your epithelium, which is the outside, the epidermis. Yep. Um, under that, um, if you go further down, you've got muscle yeah. in some cases. And so you need to link them together. So sure. you need to support the two together by having connected tissue in between them yep. to support those other two to three tissue types. Sure. That one also sort of feeds into the next one I'm going to say, oh, but you're right. It's a polite way of saying uh, you're wrong. <laughs> another way is bones again. They support the weight of our body. Okay. Cartilage supports the joints, right? Forces moving through those those joints. Uh, the, the support is also like your kidneys. So they need to be supported. Otherwise, they're just going to be free-floating throughout the body. So which, they need to be they anchored. They, they get anchored to the back wall yeah. on a bed of fat. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the best bed, one of the bed, <laughs> bed types you can have. That's right. One of the best beds you'll bed, ever sleep on. Sealy posture <laughs> purity, but you can have a, a bed of fat. Um, right. If you lose too much fat, 
the uh, kidneys don't have that protection or that yeah. support and they just move up and down. That's right. They just float around. Yeah, floating uh, kidneys, so which is actually a thing. That is a thing. Uh, so we've got protects, we've got supports. Third one is binds. Yes. Yeah. It wraps stuff up, right? So maybe um, around organs, so they put capsules on. Yeah, it, that, uh, that's a perfect example. Most organs have a protective capsule around it. You see it with the kidneys, the spleen, other various structures. So there's binding. But also you've got like the intestines. Mesenteries. Yeah, they're all bound together. To want, you know, It's not like the movies when somebody gets eviscerated and they're pulling their intestines out like a line of sausages. It doesn't work like that. It's just one big heap. We get the pull hard because we kind of do that in the um, – our first A and P lab, not so much with a human, um, but with well, not a, at all with a human with a cadaveric rodent. Yes, and the, the students do like pulling it out and making a big long uh, line of intestine just to see how long it is. But that connective tissue puts them into a nice uh, coordinated bundle. Exactly right. Mm. Beautiful coordinated bundle is a <laughs> great way of describing this podcast. Uh, <laughs> transports, connective uh, tissue transports, blood. All right, and what's what needs to be transported in blood? Uh, let's let's would you, oh, yeah, I guess heaps okay, of stuff. In yeah, blood well, plasma, well right? I was just trying to think of is plasma connected tissue. I guess it is. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's the fluid part. It's the ground substance. Yes, uh, nutrients, oxygen, cells, waste, electrolytes. Yeah, perfect. All right, and finally, last one is immunity. Okay, well, that's the immune cells. Yeah. And uh, that would be an array of um, <laughs> yeah, very good leukocytes. Yes, okay, so white blood cells. Yeah, lymph- lymphocytes or the granulocytes, and yeah, the ones that coordinate activities with them. And don't th- but, don't forget lymphatic tissues as well. Oh yeah, right. Connect they're connective. So you could also add that to that um, repair. So after you have injury, yeah. the connective tissue is part of the repair. Process. Right. So that's they, good. Okay. Um, come so you're adding to, six to our list. Well, maybe you just put that with defense. Did you have defense? Nope. What was that one, last one? Yeah, so we've got seven now. What was the last one? Immunity. Immunity. Immunity, defense, repair, all together. Okay. So yeah. you're just going to sell it as one thing. Yeah, I'm going to sell it one Fair thing. enough. That makes it easier for the students. So we've got five, <laughs> five functions, protects, supports, binds, transports, and provides immunity. Now, the reason why connective tissue can do all these extensive roles is because it has three really important properties. These properties include tensile strength, so it can resist like pulling and stretching and tearing. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. It's got elasticity, so it can Bounces back. back. Yeah, bounces back. So like when I throw an insult at you, it just bounces straight back to me. So elasticity, you can stretch it, snaps back to its normal shape. Do we lose that? Um, That's one of the things we lose over time, right, particularly with the skin. That's right. That's right. Uh, and then finally, volume. So this is a, what people find to be an interesting one is that connective tissue is actually really important at filling space. So a lot of the time, the space filling material so with your is connective lip, tissue. Lips, um, filling that with space, that's the collagen that you add to it. Yes, and, and filling it with other things like dermal fillers and so forth, which is probably just predominantly collagen, I see. Yeah, yeah. So they're the three properties that sort of allow for all these various functions, tensile strength, elasticity, and volume. Now, next part that we need to have a chat about is the fact that some connective tissues can be really hard like bone. Some can be semi-solid. Any examples that you can think of semi-solid connective tissue? Fat. Right, fat, adipose tissue. Yeah, mm. that's – yep. Any others? Um, cartilage. Cartilage. Maybe? Yeah. I'd say that's semi-solid. Because that's um, compressible, but like it it takes upon the compressive uh, forces put through our bones. So it's usually what, one example, hyaline cartilages at the end of the long bones mm. and they kind of allow that force that goes through the bones and sh- like a shock absorber. Yep. But – That's semi-solid. Yeah. Yeah, it's semi-solid. And then liquid. Liquid blood. connective to, Yeah, blood. So – this is where students get confused because you know you, you you know what nervous tissue is when you look at it. You know what muscle tissue is when you look at it. But connective tissue seems to be well, it can be bone, it can be cartilage, it can be fat, it can be this, it can be blood, it can be that. It can be a whole range of things. So then, this question that I get asked by students is, what makes a connective tissue connective tissue? And it's the fact that it, all connective tissue contains these three things in various quantities and various types, but they all contain these three things: cells, gels. And fibers. Okay. 
So should we start and look at some of the cells of connective tissues? Let's do it. All right. There was a big thing. I'm just trying to think. Well, that'll do. Oh, that'll do. Yeah. yeah. yeah let's okay. just let's do cells. All right. So I like to now, correct me if you like to do it a different way, but I like to think about the cells that are the immature cells of connective tissue. That so my me the Barton cells. So the B for Barton. So think of the blasts and oh, then nice. the sites. These are the mature cells. These are the Michael cells of the of the connective tissue. Aren't they called the aging cells? Like let's the not, old. Let's not call them that. We'll call them the mature. Mature, um, quinescent? highly attractive. Quinescent. Quiescent. Quiescent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which just means kind of retired. Yeah. Not too active anymore. Yeah, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> which is what I plan on doing when I retire. Okay. All right, so we've got the blasts, which – so this is a suffix. This is the last part of the word. They're the immature building cells. They release the fibres. They're active. The gels and fibres. Yeah, they're, they doing, are, they're doing stuff. They're the builders, mm. right? And then you've got the sites. They're mature. They're sitting around. They're sort of just looking around the area saying, oh, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be changed, what other things do I need to call upon, All right? So let's, or or they're, um, they've locked themselves into a space they can't get out of. Yes, and I think we <laughs> spoke about that when we talked – Talk, spoke about bone. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. Let's start with the blasts. Some important cell types that are blasts that you need to know for connective tissue. Probably one of the most important is fibroblasts. Okay. Yep. So fibroblasts are the main immature cell type for many connective tissues. A lot of the yeah, loose, they're, the, they're the, the real king of connective tissue. They are, aren't they? Yep. So they make a, a lot of like the the what we call the loose connective tissues, areola, reticula, things like that, and and. And they can make all, all all those fibers you spoke about. They pretty much make the lot. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I haven't spoken about any of them, but yeah. Oh, well, you kind of did at the start when you spoke about collagen and elastin. Yeah, and I didn't. I think you did. <laughs> I didn't. Okay. You spoke about collagen in the lips, but okay. um, we we will get there. We will get there. All right. But they make that. Yeah, you're right. They make those fibers and the gels. We're going to talk about shortly. So fibroblasts, super important. They make many types of connective tissues. Osteoblasts. What's bone. That? Bone. Yeah, they're the bone builders. Chondroblasts. Cartilage. Cartilage builders. Uh, hemocytoblasts. Oh, blood. What type? Do you know? Bone marrow. Yeah, so both red and white. Yeah. Yep. All right, and then you got – and that's not an exhaustive list of the blasts, but they're probably the most common. They, they fill up most of the connective tissue types. Then you've got the mature connective tissue cells. Adipocytes. Yep. Which are? Fat. Yep. Uh, osteocytes. Oh, so they're just blasts that are retired. Yep. So mature bone, bone. cells. Chondrocytes. Yeah, they're, so they're the cartilage cells that, again, retired. Erythrocytes. Uh, red blood cells. And leukocytes. White blood cells. Yeah. And obviously others, but there we go. They're the cells. Right. So depending on the type of connective tissue depends on the cell. Or I should probably reword that and say the type of cell depends on the type of connective tissue. Yeah. Right. So the next thing is the gels. You must have gels. Are we going to come back to the cells? Not really, oh, okay. unless you want to talk I more about I think we should them. do a little bit. Okay. Um, well, just with the because with the cells, because that's going to kind of dictate what tissue they create. Yeah. Okay. I and, just said that. Yeah, it's um, okay. But, but just, just to – Don't listen to anything I'll say. <laughs> um, another way we could kind of do a degree of categorization with these cells is whether they are fixed within the tissue right, or right. they migrate into the tissue – from Ooh. another area. Okay. Okay. So can we really quickly yeah. go back- All the way to, to the beginning, Matt, talk well, about embryology? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I was joking. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. <sighs> really quickly. No? Right, no yes, go, please. No, no, do, please. Do, it, do it. Okay. Um, well, we, we all started- <laughs> We all started with uh, a zygote. Do you agree? You had three goats. I think. Okay. So sperm, egg together, now we have a single cell zygote. That's well, where we all began as an embryo. that's what dad told me. <laughs> then we um, progressively uh, replicated. So that one cell became two and so on, so on, so on. So all right. Okay. Transport, because this, this all began in the floping tube, transport a few weeks until we're in the, the uterus. Let's say at about three weeks we – change that cluster of cells into three broad um, groupings. Groupings, yeah. yeah. We have the ectoderm, 
Right. The endoderm. Yep. And we have the mesoderm. Okay. I'm not going to go too far into this. Doesn't that just mean outer, middle and inner? Yep, that's right. Yep. Ectoderm pretty much makes your skin, so your outer wrapping and your central nervous system. All right. Okay. All right. The endoderm is just the pipes inside. All right. Pretty much the gut. Ooh. And the mesoderm yeah. is everything else. Connected so tissue. Does pretty connected much all the tissue? connected tissue that's made comes from the mesoderm. All right. Now, at this point, the cells that start to differentiate from the mesoderm is what we call mesochymal. Right. Okay. okay. That so makes sense. mesochymal stem cell is pretty much all those connected tissue cells that you mentioned come so like from this. like fibroblasts and yeah. osteoblasts that's right. and uh, they're all mesenchymal cells. That's right. They, cells. Come, they come from that. All right. Okay. And there's an important just dis- dis- distinction that we should make here, the difference between a stem cell yes. and a progenitor cell. Oh, what is it? Do you know the difference? Um, I think a stem cell can become anything and a progenitor cell goes down one particular lineage. Or yeah, am that, I totally wrong? Oh, no, you're pretty much right. A stem cell, though, has the capacity to keep renewing itself. Right. Okay, so a good example was the hemopoietic stem cell. Yep. So that sits in the bone marrow, okay, but it has the capacity to regenerate itself to so to stay as a stem cell. Yes. But as it goes down a lineage, it becomes a pleuro or a potent cell. So now as it goes down, it can only – so it could have a lympho, a lymphoblast or a myeloid blast. They can only go down a certain line yeah, now. So limited. lympho – now it can only become a lymphocyte or a natural killer cell. Right. Or the myeloids can become granulocytes or um, red blood cells. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. But they sense. can't renew themselves anymore. So they're progenitor cells. Progenitor. Right. But the stem cell that sits back in the bone marrow, it it is still a stem cell. Right. So to speak. Okay. So, so we're at this point, the mesenchymal stem cells now. So this, the mesenchymal will make the majority of your connective tissue, but right. there's one group that, you know, it's kind of a, a strange one, but. Um, as the embryos develop and you have this kind of bulgy sac at the front, which they call the yolk. You've kept, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's kept the yolk sac. That is making stem cells to produce blood. So ah. in the baby or the very early embryo, yeah. that's making the blood cells. So that's right, where right, the right, hemopoietic right. stem cells are. Okay, okay. Then as the embryo develops, they migrate into the liver and spleen. And they take over doing the blood cells. All right. But as we get closer to being born, they migrate further and then they go into the bones. Uh And so they become your hemopoietic stem cells. And so now, as an, or as a, a, let's just say an adult. Yeah. I was going to say a born human. Um, (laughs) You could. I mean, they're both two words. Um, Now the hemopoietic. Poetic stem cells, so the ones that will make the connective tissues from all the blood-driven yes. products come from that one population of cells. Okay. What's the point of this? Well, it just tells you that's one where one uh, where it originated from. Yeah. And the others, all the other ones you mentioned, are from the mesochymal stem cells. All right. So okay. some, some migrate there and some reside... So now with the hemopoietic stem cells, yeah. they're, at least the stem cells, they are fixed within bone marrow, but as soon as they start to come into a progenitor, progenitor cell and then become more like their functional uh, outcome, yeah. then they move into the blood, okay? So now they migrate in the blood, move around the blood, and then when there's potentially an issue, they will move off into the tissue, when there's an issue, they move off in the tissue. Right, so. Is that I how mean, you get students to remember it? Besides like red blood cells, they'll stay, they'll stay in the blood f- forever okay. until they die at least. But all the white blood cells, they'll move out. All right. Does that make sense? So yeah. that they're therefore migrating or migrant uh, connected tissue cells. Gotcha. Cool. That's cool. But interestingly, if you took up you – know, you know, No, no it would be good to hear something interesting. You know when you did the pile of cells for me? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. About 40% of those cells, yeah. somewhere between 40 to 60% is only one cell type. Red blood cells? Yeah. Isn't wow. that amazing? Okay. So the, your majority of cells Operative are actually red blood cells. Red in there for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, uh, okay. I That's, thought that was cool. No, that is cool. That's, so the, that was so, the most important thing, so then, the most interesting thing you said in the past 15 minutes. So then so. you have the fixed cells that are actually locked in the tissue. They can't really move out and yeah. around and so forth. That's going to be all the resident cells, that's going to be the ones you mentioned, like the blasts. 
right. but they still come from the mesenchymal cells and that still gives them the capacity to regenerate that population. Yes. And that's where all the, I don't know if this is a safe thing to say, the quackery with stem cell therapies yeah, yeah. where they're injecting mesenchymal stem cells oh, yeah. into your blood and, and they're like, it, it will go to the right location and regenerate your cartilage or your ligaments or whatever. It doesn't work like that. Um, there, obviously there's good research being done to say if you were to take a mesocomal stem cell and put it into, say, a degenerative joint, whether that has capacity, but just to throw it into your blood and think it will go yeah. miraculously into that area to regenerate it. Yeah, it's... Uh, Questionable. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Well, welcome back, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought that was all right. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, I look, it's my job... To, to hang hang crap on you, Matt. Sure but, do. That's harsh. And, no, well, it feels good. It feels good to do it. Uh, all right. So done with I'm cells? I'm done. I'll just leave the room. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I need you to be here because otherwise I'll be talking to um to a wall. <laughs> Stand it. It's probably no different. A wall of, a wall of osteoblasts. <laughs> all right. Cells, gels, and fibers. We just okay, did the so cells. We did cells. Yep. Uh, gels. So in actual fact, they're not called gels. They're called ground substance. Okay. Uh, and basically- it creates the fluid-rich environment that all the components of the connective tissue sit within. Bathe. Yeah, that's right. So all the all the cells, all the fibres, all the other chemicals are sitting within the gels or the ground substance. And in actual fact, the ground substance is made up of four major things. Water is a big one. Gags, right? Which uh, Glossopharyngeal nerve. No, oh. no, nor is it... Uh, anyway, uh, it's glycosaminoglycans. I'm glad you said that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, stick with gags, yeah. Yep. I can see why you did that. <laughs> yep. Uh, proteoglycans yeah. and glycoproteins. Now, does it annoy why you? Why are those two? Yeah. Why don't they revert? Like, Isn't it frustrating? Does that mean just the, the amount? One's yeah. got more sugar on a protein and the other one's more protein on sugar? Yeah, man, that's pretty much it. So, Thanks, uh, dude. Proteo... <laughs> <laughs> proteoglycans, proteins with sugars, glycoproteins, sugars with proteins, right? It's stupid, but they're very similar, but I'll tell you the differences in a sec, right? All right, so water, glycosaminoglycans or GAGs, uh, proteoglycans and glycoproteins. So let's first start, well, we know what water is, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's first start with the GAGs, okay. the glycosaminoglycans. So these are these long unbranched chains of complex carbohydrates, so they're carbs and they're found in all the different- Like cartilage? Yeah. Well, they're found in all the different- Is this like glu- glucosamine? Uh, yes. So if you think about the different types of gags, right? You've got the chondroitin sulfate, mm-hmm. heparin sulfate, keratin sulfate, hyaluronic acid. So they're all different types of glycosaminoglycans. Okay. They all slightly perform different functions depending on where they are. So like for example, hyaluronic acid uh, is in joints- plays a really important role as like a shock absorber and lubricant, all right? Now, I want you to have a think of the proteoglycans now. The proteoglycans are basically always attached to the GAGs. So the GAGs and proteoglycans together and the proteoglycans allow for like the glycosaminoglycans to really absorb water, to hold on to water. Okay. So it plays a really important role in the... Uh, connective tissue to bulk it up and obviously in cartilage it's very important when it comes to providing that bulk for shock absorption and so forth Mm. Um, but it also just maintains like the integrity of that connective tissue then when you look at something like a a glycoprotein it doesn't really attach to gags but it has a like an example of a a glycoprotein is fibronectin and laminin right and they form cross-linking in the ex, in, in the ground substance, okay. also known as the extracellular matrix. Well, actually, the extracellular matrix is the ground substance and the fibers together, and right? Yeah, 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 that's right. And so, so I was going to say that earlier, then, but I knew you'd criticize me because I hadn't spoken about the fibers Correct. yet. Yeah. Correct. So the glycoproteins they play an important role in cell signaling, regulating cell behavior, and tissue repair as well. They also act as cell adhesion molecules. Mm. They promote cell to cell interaction, and they maintain integrity. So at the end of the day, the way I think about it is that glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans are bound together. The different types of each is dependent on the different connective tissue type and they all play a slightly different role, but at the end of the day, they mostly play an important role in just 
pulling water in towards that tissue. Okay. That's important. They play other roles, but that's really important. Glycoproteins, like the uh, fibronectin and laminin, they play an extensive role. Like I just said, cell signaling, behaviour, um, cell adhesion, things like that. Mm-hmm. And so these are the major constituents of the ground substance. Does that make sense? It does. All right. Then finally we've got the fibres. Now, like you said, the ground substance plus the fibres is the extracellular matrix. Yeah, yeah. It's basically the whole thing that everything's Im- embedded in. So when we have a look at the fibres, what are the three fibre types? My guess would be collagen. Yep. Do I have to say anything more? No, we'll go okay. through them all. Collagen, elastin and reticular fibres. Perfect. Let's start with collagen fibres. Before I describe what it looks like, when you – oh, you're a vegetarian so there's, you don't eat steak. There's different – So that's just ruined my example here. Keep going. I've eaten steak before. You have? Yeah. Okay. So when you eat a steak and you get that real chewy part, it's real white and, and glossy and you chew, chew, chew and you just can't break it down, mm. that's collagen. Collagen is tough. Collagen is strong. Collagen provides that tensile strength within connective tissue. As a fibre, it's like a metal rod that's placed within the tissue, providing that strength. You compare that to like elastic fibres, which is like a rubber band, you put that into tissue, it just makes it stretchy so that it can snap back. Right. Very different to the collagen. Yep. And then the reticular fibres, they look like feathers. So they, they provide like networks. Mm-hmm. Right, And so the type of tissue that they're in are tissues that require a very sort of mesh-like, network-like structure like uh, lymphatic tissue, right. for example. Like the spleen. Like the spleen, perfect. That's filled with reticular fibres. So collagen for strength, elastin for stretch and reticular fibres for mesh-like networks to be able to hold and wrap things together, which sort of describes connective tissue perfectly. Right. So depending on the connective tissue, like if you've got something like bone, you're probably going to have a lot of collagen fibres embedded within it. If you've got something like spleen, you're going to have a lot of reticular fibres. If you've got like a stretchy artery, the wall of the artery, the connective tissue wall, it's going to have huge amounts of elastic tissue Mm. embedded in it. Now, you take that into consideration with the differences in extracellular matrix and ground substance and then the different cells and now you can sort of see why it's all so variable going from bone to cartilage to blood to whatever it may be. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. All right. So I, when I put it all together, the analogy I use with my students is like making jelly. You got that aeroplane jelly mix. Do mm-hmm. they have aeroplane jelly in other countries? Yeah. I'd, Can you I'd, sing the song, the, the aeroplane jelly theme song? I like, like aeroplane jelly, aeroplane jelly for me. I like it for dinner. I like it for tea. A little each day. Is a good recipe? So, yeah. I'm not sure that's true though. No, it sounds pretty um, – Is that just collagen? Uh, the, f- the the jelly? Yeah. I don't know what it's made out of. But let's just say it's not – Gelatin. 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 Right? So let's – okay, so it's made out of gelatin. But we know what jelly's like, right? Really wobbly, really unstable. But if I were to take some metal – little metal rods and place it in the jelly, it would make it more solid, mm. right? Or if I was to put more elastic like rubber bands or st- – whatever, what are, what's another name for rubber bands? Elastic bands, Elastic right? Bands. Chuck them in the jelly. It's going to allow for it to really stretch and move and be able to snap back. Or if I would put feathers in it, again, it's creating this mesh-like network. What would the feathers do? Uh, create a mesh-like <laughs> network inside <laughs> of it. All right, the analogy falls short once I hit that, but <laughs> but you get the picture that I'm trying to make, right? Hopefully, maybe you don't. Uh, so – that's how connective tissue – that's sort of like the histology of connective tissues. Yeah. Cells, gels, fibers. Finally, we need to talk about categorizing connective tissue. So basically we've set it up now that we un- we've first spoken about the different functions of connective tissue. Yep. Then we've said what are the components. Yep. And now by changing the, uh, the components in percentage-wise, it will then cause – an outcome that will then provide us with how we then categorise connective tissue. Yeah. So the tissue types, the connective tissue types. Right. Do you want me to start broad and then go more specific? Yeah. All right. There's three main main types of connective tissue. You've got connective tissue proper, supporting connective tissue, and then fluid connective tissue. 
Okay. So connective tissue proper. The way I like to think about it is this is the proper connective tissue. When you think of connective tissue of the body, this is the connective tissue you're thinking about. The stuff that anchors the organs of the body, the stuff that sticks the skin down to more deeper layers of the body, this is the connective tissue that you think of. Okay. Right? Then what was the second one? Supporting connective tissue. This supports the body. So, so this how does this not fit into the proper one then? Well, I don't think of bone and cartilage as connective oh, tissue. Oh, okay. Maybe right? we, could, we could call this special then. Yeah, or supporting, like I said. No, I like special. Because <laughs> right. it sounds like it sits outside. All right. We can say that. We'll say special yep. slash supporting. <laughs> so that's going to be bone and, and cartilage. And then you've got fluid, which is yep. blood. blood. Right. So let's start with the connective tissue proper. So there's actually, fortunately for us, or unfortunately for the students, two subcategories here. Under connective tissue proper, you've got dense connective tissue. And loose connective tissue. Right. That makes that make sense. Okay, in what way? What, that category? Yeah, yeah. Well, dense to me would, it would kind of indicate that the, probably the fibres are jam-packed together in bundles. All of it really. Yeah. Or all, all, everything's jam-packed, okay. even cells. Okay. Um, whereas loose is loosely arranged. Loosey-goosey. Yeah, yeah. But it, not to the extent where it's fluid. Yes, perfect. That's exactly right. Exactly right. So dense... Everything's densely packed, loose, things are loosely packed. Now, under dense connective tissue, you've got dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic. So dense regular is obviously everything's densely packed, but the fibres are regularly arranged. Yeah, so all like parallel to one another, okay. like all facing in the one direction. What would that mean if you've got connective tissue with all the fibres in the one direction? They'll probably provide some kind of integrity, some kind of support um, in the direction that they're running. So... Um, preventing a structure getting pulled apart in that one directional manner. Yeah, perfect. So like ligaments and tendons, yeah. they will generally cross joints, for example, and they, are ten- they tend to be pulled in only one particular direction. And that's like the tendons in the direction of the muscles yeah. pull in. Yeah. If it's ligaments, they're bone to bone. So yeah. the, 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 the weak, the weak, Range of mo- not range of motion, but the way the joint moves probably in the the weakest position it can be, and you put these ligaments to give it greater support. Yeah, ligaments and tendons. That's a type of dense regular connective tissue. Also, the fascia, right? Fascia aponeurosis. Yeah. Yes, yes. Which, which maybe not as dense as ligaments and tendons, but still. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think fascia is loose connective tissue. Okay. Yeah, fa- I'm quite sure fascia is loose, loose connective tissue. Um, then you've got dense irregular. So this is where the fibres are irregularly orientated. So it sort of looks like they're just arranged randomly. Why would that be the case? Uh, I would imagine then the mechanical depressions or the forces are going in all sorts of different ways. Yeah. So like, maybe under the skin? Yeah, dermis. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So obviously that's going to receive forces from multiple angles. So the dermis. And then finally under dense Connective, which again sits under connective tissue proper, is elastic connective connective tissue. So these are like the walls of our arteries. Okay. So left side of the heart contracts, pushes <coughs> blood out, stretches those arteries. They need to be able to snap back to give us that diastolic blood value and that's elastic tissue. Okay. All right. So that's its own category. It's its own category. Yeah. Right. But okay. it sits under dense connective tissue because it's densely packed. Then we've got loose connective tissue, still under the connective tissue proper. This is three categories. Adipose, which is? Fat. Yep. Areola, which is sort of like the connective tissue that- So would you say with adipose, yeah. it's the one of the only examples where the fluid or the ground substance is actually in the cell instead of outside it? Oh. Because you'd say- wow. Wow, I never even thought about that. Because you'd say, yeah, yeah. In terms of connective tissue, yeah, the ground substance. No, actually, well, let's is just it, call. Was, is it inside or yeah, is it outside? That's inside. So that's the I've never f- even thought about that's that. That's the lipid droplet. Yeah, but it's is that gr- the is that the ground substance? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I never thought about it. Because like if you look at an adipose side, it's just yeah. a big round globule of fat. Yeah. And if you looked at because it's at metabolically it, active. If you look at it histologically, yeah, it looks like it has a ring around it. That's the cytoplasm mm. and it will have the uh, nucleus, which you can see is logically, but all the middle looks empty. Wow. And so that's just the fat. 
Didn't even think about that. That's awesome to think about. Good point. Next is areola. So areola is the connective tissue of the deep structures of the body. It's the one that like supports and binds and holds all the mainly gastrointestinal viscera together, but obviously other structures. But it's supporting and binding and holding the deeper structures. Then you've got reticula. And this forms, remember the reticular fibres are like sort of feathers, forming a mesh-like network, plays an important role like filtration, for example. Think of the lymphatic tissue like the spleen. Mm-hmm. That's going to be reticular. So those three, adipose, uh, areola and reticular, they're loose connective tissue. Again, sitting under connective tissue proper. Then finally, well, not finally, but the second one is the special connective tissue or the support. Thank you, thank you. Bone and cartilage. Bone is bone. We know what bone is. We've done a whole episode on bone or multiple. But interestingly with bone, yes. like you were saying earlier, when you are talking about the, the rods in it, and we, I may have said this when we did the, the bone, but when you create cement, mm. okay, so if you want to lay down a concrete path, if you were to just- It's not a euphemism, is it? I don't think so. Right. If you were to just to put the concrete down and nothing else, yeah. it would have strength in its compressile manner, yeah. but it would be very weak in, I'm not sure what that plane of mo- movement is. Yeah, um, It's good for a podcast. <laughs> At least this is going to be up like on the YouTube if channel. If you were- if you were, yeah, that's right. If you were walking on it or if you put something heavy on top of the path, it would break it would break because it's not strong yeah. in that particular. So vertical forces. Yeah, I guess. So. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what they add to the concrete path is steel rods. Right. And that gives it that strength in that plane. Like putting the collagen into the bone. Right. So that's kind of where I was going with it. With yeah. bone, the osteoblast lay down the collagen fibres yep. and then it becomes calcified mm. with calcium and phosphate, which – what's that term called? Um, I've got a mind blank. Calcified? Yeah, just that term though. doesn't matter. Yep. You're just adding a salt to it, which then gives it a different degree of strength. Yeah. Okay, and that then provides um, its structural – Integrity. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Whereas the other one, what was the other one? Cartilage. Cartilage. Which then is interesting because then like, again, don't roll your eyes, but if you look at bones before they're made, they were cartilage before bones mostly, right? Like yeah, most, they were, but they were like a cartilage precursor too, right? Right. It's not like the, our so current were, cartilage. No, but there was like the bone. Which Talking was about when like, we were children. Yeah, so they were chondrocytes and then that – Osteoblasts migrate and yes. change the form, the ground substance into more bone like. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that kind of allows our bones to lengthen. Yeah. Still gave the cartilage plate to stay open, which allows it to grow. Mm. And then eventually that os- ossifies itself to then close off. Yeah. So it's interesting that that kind of has its own kind of differentiation yeah. or change yeah. between these two specialized groups. Yeah. So with the cartilage, yes. then we have further groups, right? Three. Three so we have the hyaline. Yeah, hyaline. And that's the end of the end of the bones. Yeah, very glossy, very shiny, very smooth. Providing uh, articulating surfaces. Friction free um, movement. Yeah. Knee, hip, shoulder, any joint, any like um, synovial joint. But then you have additional in or at least say the knee, yeah. then you have additional hyaline cartilage that That's fibrocartilage. Oh, the meniscus. The, oh, the meniscus. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, like, we'll then go to fibrous cartilage. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So fibrous <laughs> cartilage is like the meniscus of the knee for compressive resistance. So that just increases forces. the the congruency of the, the joint. Yeah. Because it's a fairly unstable joint yeah. until you put the meniscus in. Yes, that's right. And you get uh, fibro cartilage in the vertebrae as well. Okay. And between your pubis? Yes. Or pubi? Yep. Yep. Right. That's right. Um, what about your uh, epiglottis? That's going to be elastic. Oh, is it? Elastic okay. um, uh, cartilage. So that's a third. That's the third type. Ear. Ear and epiglottis. Nose. Yeah, a bit in the nose, but mainly epiglottis and ear. That's the okay. elastic cartilage. Okay. Yeah. And then finally, fluid connective tissue. And that's blood. Which is blood. Yeah. So it obviously has very few fibres in it. Otherwise, the more fibres... And the more glycosamine glycans. That's, that's, that's a clot and, and then you're going well, to have some problems. That's true actually because obviously the types of fibres that we have in blood are going to be those that help with clotting. Which will be inactive most and, of the time. But Fib- it solidifies like f- it, Fibrinogen. Right? 
it solidifies it, yeah, yeah. hence the clot. Mm. Um, and yeah, fibrin, fibrinogen, these are all fibres that play a role in the connective tissue fibres, mm. but they clot things up. Mm. So that's, you know. And platelets, which is an important cell for kind of modulating or cre- initiating that clot. Yes, that's exactly right. But yes, how are we going for time? No, we're, we're good, we're good. Okay, because so there's a, um, a cell that I briefly want to talk about. Mm. I know we're going bit back to... To cells, but I think this brings in an important do clinic. To, do we have to go back through sperm meeting the egg? And <laughs> again, no, I will skip that. Right. What's one of the most abundant is kind of a migrant cell, but then becomes a resident. It's found everywhere in your connective tissue. Macrophage? Bar central nervous system. Macrophages? Close. Neutrophils? No. I think they only come out when there's really some... Serious issues, but what? What is what, it? What's what's this function that you're talking about here with macrophages and immune? They, okay, they're eaters. Yep. So, what initiates an immune response in the connective tissue? Um, well, a couple of cells, mast cells. Mast cells. That's it. Ah, okay. So the mast cell. Yeah. The mast cells are the connective tissue immune cells. Right. So they yep. sit in the connective yes, tissue. Yes. Yes. And when there's any kind of trauma, anything from mechanical injury, uh, physical injury, chemical injury thermal injury, yeah. they will be activated. Right. And they are an immune cell that has granules inside them and they vomit them out when That's they nice when, when, when they get, when they get um, okay, all right, technically they, they degranulate. Out. Oh, okay. Okay. but Which is pooping. Pooping That's or vomiting yeah. um, everywhere. Yeah. And Do they pass out after that? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I think they stay alive. Okay. Good question. Oh, yeah, having this go at me. Very good. <laughs> um, so by doing so, then they bring in those other immune cells in it. But yeah. the reason why I'm bringing this up. Yeah, we're some, all asking. Some quite sig- significant clinical issues go wrong when these cells are overzealot, let's say. Right. And th- is, is this just hay fever? Could be hay fever because yeah. that's going to be what, – what, what's hay fever? Well, isn't that – Is that just a, a cluster of symptoms? Or is that like a – is it a condition with multiple things happening? Yeah, I suppose it is. So I always just think about it as like a, a hypersensitivity reaction. It is. But w- when you say hay fever, what what, what are the symptoms? Well, Eyes? every time I go to R- bale like some hay in, <laughs> at the back in the bar. Rhin- rhin- rhinorrhea? Excuse me? So your nose runs? Pretty sure I went to school with rhin- that. Rhinoritis. Uh, Rhinoitis. Rhinitis. Yeah. Yeah. So you know your nose runs or it yeah. gets inflamed, yes. Yeah. Eyes. Yeah, watering. Anything else? Um uh close Maybe up sinus. airways. Maybe sinuses. Yeah, and then it goes down to the lungs. Yeah. So um hay fever, yes, but also atopic asthma, so allergic right. based asthma. Right. Which is a hypersensitivity rate. That's right. Yep. But one then, or two, do you remember? It's one. Okay. But you can go further and make it whole body. Oh, and then that's anaphylaxis. anaphylaxis. <sighs> Boy, okay. So the, the way that this works is essentially your wait. So anaphylaxis is a connective tissue dysfunction. Well, yeah, it's because it's from a connective tissue cell. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so so essentially, can I really just say really quickly how it happens? Thanks, everyone. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, go, 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 go. Are we doing anaphylaxis or or an allergy? No, no. I want you to just say what you were going to say. Okay. Yeah. Pick an allergen that you want to get allergic to. Oh, peanut butter protein. Okay, we'll just say peanut, peanuts. Right. So you ingest it yep. um, for the first time. Uh, f- your body sees it as foreign. So it sees there's something going on with this yep. we need to deal with. Well, actually, it's probably your macrophages, right. which is also an immune cell. Which Sorry, a connective tissue cell, right. if we're going to be technical, yep. right? Hence why I said so, macrophages earlier. So they um, gobble it up. Yep. They can't get rid of it in a, a way that a person who doesn't have an allergy to peanuts would. They, so they see it as, oh, there's something wrong with this peanut uh, protein. I'm going to present it. Mm. I'm going to break it up but then present it on, like on the outside. On the surface. Okay, and yep. along comes a T helper cell, also a connective tissue cell. Yes. Uh, so this is a lymphocyte but it's specifically a T which uh, matured in the thymus, kind of the top of your neck, no, bottom of your neck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it um, communicated with a – are you looking at your watch? No. Communicated with your macrophage and then said, hey, we should probably build up an antibody against this foreign thing, which, yeah. is, which is the uh, peanut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
B cell, come along, please, because I needed you to make some antigens. Oh, sorry, copy, antibodies for copy me. Copy itself over and over and over. So plasma cells, antibodies. Clones it, makes it into a plasma cell, pumps out the uh, antibody. This antibody is an IgE-based antibody. Right, so we've got okay. an army now okay. trained to fight this protein. Right, but these antibodies, which are IgE-typed, will get flooded into the body, but they bind to mast cells. Right. Now the mast cell is primed. Why are they binding to mast cells? The, the mast cells have a particular receptor for IgE antibodies. Okay. But in this case, it's seen as a foreign agent that you should be, just like a, a bacteria or a virus yeah. that you want to encounter later to kill off quickly. But in this case, it sees a peanut protein as that foreign thing. Okay. So now it's primed. So now the second exposure comes. Ooh, so first exposure, you're all good. Probably. Yeah. Second exposure Sec- though. Now it's going to be problematic. So now you're exposed Call to it. the army. Now every mast cell that gets exposed to a peanut protein. Poop, poops out its chemicals. Will vomit everywhere, histamine and. Huge amounts of vasodilation. Now, now you just, now basically say where all the connective tissue that mast cells are located. Around blood vessels. Yeah, get around fun. your bronchioles. Around your lips and nose and around your gut and they all cause a response. So in your inflammatory response. Inflammatory response. So yeah. your bronchioles will close up. Yeah. Can't breathe. Your blood vessels will dilate. Yeah. So blood pressure drops. Bl- blood pressure goes through the floor. Through the floor. Not through the roof. No. Um, None of your organs your get guts, fed because your, of that. It's, your guts feel like they're spasming yep. because they're all contracting. Um, the skin gets uh, hives because all the blood vessels are dilating your skin so you get rashes, yep. tongue swells up. So this is now an anaphylactic response. You can die pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. And so this could be anything. It could doesn't it be just uh, peanuts. It could be bee stings. Yep. It could be penicillin. So anaphylaxis is a connective tissue disease. Yeah, yeah you like that? I like that. No, no, no that was, was a good it, way. Was it, wor- it, was it worth the time? That's uh, what I want to ask. That I'm, I'm yet to determine. <laughs> Uh, But we do need to finish off there. That is connective tissue. I do want to read some emails though. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.